Hello, welcome to Working with Miniatures. I'm Jim, and tonight we're going to be painting the Mercenary Heavy Machine Gunner Squad 3 from the game Dust 1947. We'll primarily be using Army Painter Speed Paints and War Paints. Let's get started. Right after I go pick up dinner. This miniature was primed with an airbrush using Vallejo's black primer followed by zenithal sprays of gray and white. I then carefully cut the gunner figure to remove it from the base so I can easily apply AK Interactive's Desert Sand around the two remaining figures. Starting with Pallid Bone, I sporadically apply it around the coveralls. I am going for a four-tone camo pattern, so I ensure I leave plenty of room for the other three colors. I also apply the Pallid Bone to the boots, gloves, and as well as the shorts and hair of the gunner. I next paint the metal objects with shining silver. If I were a smart man, and that I most certainly am not, I would have painted the metals first since I'll be going back to pallet bone in a few moments, since the machine gun will be painted the same camouflage pattern as the coveralls. And why am I literally slapping this paint on? That can't be good for the bristles. As promised, we return to Pallet Bone. Let this serve as a lesson for planning ahead to save time. At some point, I turned to Google to identify this weapon, assuming it was a 20mm as can be seen in Saving Private Ryan during its climactic finale. However, this looks to be akin to the 50 cal M2 Browning. Here's an image I found showing the difference in the rounds for the 50 cal compared to a 20mm. I've set downrange quite a few 50 cals in a sitting and it stops being fun pretty fast, so it's unsurprising that the 20mm is not a shoulder fire round. Oh my god, a company called Anzio made a shoulder fire 20mm. Shifting to the second speed paint, I apply sand golem to a little less than half of the remaining surface area. Then I bemoan the need, let alone the legal ramifications for a civilian owning a 20mm rifle. Then the more I think about it, I kinda want one. Oh, wait a minute, that's 13,000? Yeah, no thanks, Anzio. Moving along to hardened leather, I apply it to the rest of the remaining area. I'm not worried about completely covering the gray, as that is what the last bee paint will be for, or a catch-all in a manner of speaking. Malignant Green will be our final speed paint, and I apply it to the remaining gray on the coveralls, ammo boxes, and the heavy machine gun. Since it's a lighter color than the others, it will not overpower or overlap them. I'll only be showing one figure being painted in regards to the hair and flesh, though the rest are done with the same steps, albeit different colors. As always, the colors will be shown at the end of this video. Once the hair is dry, I take the two miniatures outside for a quick spray with Tester's Dull Coat Varnish. After the varnish is cured, I start on the flesh with scar tissue, thinned down with glaze medium, which I apply over five to six light coats, letting the paint dry in between. I'm learning the more I give the paint time to dry, the less chalky of a finish I'm getting in the end. I repeat this process over multiple light glaze coats, covering slightly less area each time as I apply topaz skin. Next, I apply soft skin wash to darken the recesses in the face and the cleavage before using a clean brush to wipe away any unwanted pulling. Coming back to the topaz skin, I apply two to three light glazes just to bring back a little of the highlight that was dulled by the wash. The final highlight is done over two to three light glazes, again letting each coat dry before applying the next, though this time with ruby skin. This tonal shift was too much in my humble opinion, and the next time I try this recipe I'll likely mix ruby skin and topaz skin at around a one to one ratio. To tone down the giant tonal shift between shadow and light, I apply a very dilute glaze of topaz skin over all of the flesh. Returning to the hair, I apply a little glazing of desert yellow over the dark wood. 
I had some trouble getting the desert yellow to cover all over the rich brown, as I likely added too much glazing medium. Moving along to basilisk brown, I apply more highlights focused on the upper 50% or so of the head facing the sun. The final hair highlight is done with fire lizard and this I apply in thin lines around the crown of the head. I return to the camouflage of the coveralls, ammo crates, and heavy machine gun using banshee brown and snake scales as highlights. I mix multi-black and solvent to a consistency that stains my swollen arthritic old man knuckles and then I apply this to all of the metals. I finally dry brush a little shining silver over the metals and then I call it a night. This is a final result. For lessons learned, I need to take more time painting, especially on flesh or fine fabrics like silk, to ensure I get a smoother finish. I think allotting more time in between coats will help, as well as thinning the paints with the medium as opposed to the iron-rich tap water pumped to my house by the city. It's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or inspired to start or expand your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time. I'd bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.